Hello and welcome to Built to Endure. I am Emma, founder of Built to Endure and the strength and conditioning coach for endurance athletes. I'm going to talk you through the origin, mission and vision behind Built to Endure and the endurance strength analysis course. So we're going to kick things off with a short video which basically encapsulates the mission behind Built to Endure. This video came off the back of a question being asked um, publicly, which was just concerning what sort of strength and conditioning work endurance runners do. And the responses are from recreational runners and also coaches, running coaches. So this basically highlights the myths, the reason why the myths with regards to strength training for endurance sports still exist and that misinformation which is still out there and that's ultimately what built to endure stands is to set the record straight and make sure people have the right information in order to be able to progress their training so i'll play it through once and then we'll break it down So we can see in this video that we've got the element of high reps, low weight. We've got coaches saying that heel reps are better than any work in the gym. We also have comments with regards to not needing to do any leg work because it's going to affect running. Again, heel reps being more important than gym work and strength conditioning work not being beneficial unless you can do a sub 90 minute half marathon. Um, there's CrossFit in there, there's boot camps, there's no work on lower body and just work on upper body because the lower body is getting enough stimulus from running alone. Um, or there's lower body with no upper body work, but again, that lower body work is not with any sort of resistance or mechanical load. Um, so this video, as I said, it just highlights the mission behind Built to Endure and what we're seeking to change. And that's basically where the origin of Built to Endure comes from. So we are born out of the necessity for strength training to align with the distinctive demands of endurance sports and we stand as a testament to tailored performance enhancement for endurance athletes so where we're constantly pushing boundaries and testing what the human body is capable of in both speed across long distances um, and distance itself there really is nothing else out there like built to endure and as we can see there is a need for it. There is a need for our strength and conditioning to align with our endurance training and the demands of our endurance sports. So that's our mission. We are looking to empower and educate endurance strength performance coaches, unlocking enhanced performance, robustness and resilience in endurance athletes. And you can come on this pathway if you are a recreational endurance athlete yourself, or if you're a coach, or if you're a, already a strength and conditioning coach, but looking to go bespoke to endurance sports. And by the end of 2025, we aspire to create 1,500 endurance strength performance coaches. Built to Endure is underpinned by these four values, and these values are present in our courses, in the way the courses are delivered, in the way that our endurance strength performance coaches deliver their training and how that applies to the athletes that they coach or that you yourself as a recreational athlete on this pathway, how you use this information in your own training. So we're going to start off with knowledge is power, giving you the education for you to then apply it strength that endures we want longevity with endurance sports as they are so demanding on the body I, built to endure wants longevity with endurance sports for you so that you can do what you love or your athletes love for as long as you want to as long as they want to respect 
respecting endurance sports and its distinct challenges, and then exercising that diligence and integrity um, in crafting strength training programs uniquely tailored to each individual athlete and their goals with endurance sports as well. So the vision of this endurance strength analysis course is to allow you to identify your individual needs as an endurance athlete or the needs of your athletes with a movement screening that is the platform from which you can begin to design a great strength and conditioning program that is bespoke and tailored to you or your athletes and their needs. And that's the game changer really between a cookie cutter, generalized plan, one that's not going to address your strengths, your weaknesses, your asymmetry, where you fall apart in a race or where you fall apart in your training or what you do great in your training because it's the same for everyone out there. Anyone could just go get it off the shelf and it's got no understanding of the athlete in front of them. And that's where the movement screening comes into it. We were able to see your strengths, your weaknesses and design a great strength and conditioning program which looks to improve those strengths further and bring those weaknesses up to help with that you will be confident in delivering the movement screening and interpreting the results against the baseline standards for endurance athletes now these standards are not meant to um, ruin confidence or lower confidence conversely they're also not meant to think oh I'm over that threshold I'm way over that baseline I don't need to do any strength conditioning work in that way because I'm over that baseline but these are sort of the the minimum standards of where we want to be to help our endurance performance and really get the results and performance that we're looking for and help prevent with injuries develop top end speed power ability to endure etc you will also learn how and when to use the movement screening to adequately, adequately monitor the development of your own training performance or your athlete's training. So this is a really nice way of using the movement screening, being clever with it and almost taking a step back in your training or your athlete's training. So if you look at something and you think, OK, endurance training's in there, it's not quite right, something's not quite right my the way I'm responding to training is not quite right or my RPE is not quite lining up with this session I'm not able to put down the power I'm not able to hold the power whilst there can be a plethora of things going on from nutrition sleep hydration stress management etc a big part of it will be just in how we are moving so we can use the movement screening to tell us that, OK, actually, maybe we are carrying excess fatigue. Maybe one of those other pillars of nutrition, sleep, hydration, stress was out of line for that week and we haven't recovered as well. And that's why when we're hitting this next session, we don't feel that great. So we can use that movement screening to help shape our strength and conditioning and also our endurance training as well, because we might think, oh, I could ease off the gas a little bit. So if I'm struggling to do a simple body weight movement that's in the movement screening, there's no way really that my strength and conditioning program should be having me doing weighted plyometric explosive jumps because I'm unable to do the simple body weight movement. So just because it's in that strength and conditioning plan for the day doesn't necessarily mean that's what I should be doing. So you will learn when and how you can use the movement screening to your advantage. Um, you will also be introduced in this course to the joint by joint approach to building an endurance athlete with our super six fundamental movement patterns and gain the knowledge and awareness that strength and conditioning for endurance athletes encompasses more than just legs.